Oh, hi guys, I'm going to do a video of the um, the Vesk 6.6, .6, the water cooled one I got, and um, that I'll be putting in the pit bike. Um, I did have it in the pit bike, I was having issues um, with it cutting out, and I think it was to do, it didn't really like, um, uh, what was it, the the brushless mode, so BLDC, that seems to work fine in um, FOC, which is, which is sort of better, it's a lot quieter. Uh, it just lose a little bit of um, output power from the motor, so it's not it's not too much, but it's you know you do notice it a little bit in acceleration and stuff. But um, otherwise, it's still plenty powerful enough. Um, rather it be a little bit underpowered um, and reliable than have it cut out and stuff. So yeah, all right. I'll give you a quick um, rundown, a little show. So it's the same. Same setup I have, um, just with the motors. I had to put a little, little brace there just to hold because the, the chain kept skipping the teeth. Um, so I've had to put that on. And here's the Vesk Six with the water cooling. Um, slide this laptop across. Um, yeah, so it's the set there. Um, so there's the water up there. Uh, comes down, goes around the pump through the VESC and back around again. Um, I've got the PWM PWM linked up to the load motor and then the driving motor, the one that's loading the VESC or the one that's you know the VESC is powering, is just done through 12 volts on the just lead acid battery. Um, on there, uh, the load is just that inside a coffee container. It's just got some um, wires I've just looped around on the phases uh, for the battery. I've got a 10S24 cells in parallel, so I think it's 200. So 24, so it's, yeah, 240 cells all together. Um, so I've got them in two packs of 5S just because I can't charge um, I can't charge 10S so I can charge 5S fine so I just do that and then run them into a series connector run them through the power meter through the power meter I've added some capacitors on there because I was trying to make the uh, brushless mode work a bit better uh, it did help actually but it was still issues with it, it would um, suddenly lose amps, so you're doing like 120 amps and then suddenly it goes to 22. still runs fine, but obviously then there's no protection of overcurrent, um, you've got no real current control then, so don't know what was going on with that. Um, straight up to a servo tester, PPM input uh, to the VESC, and that's pretty much it I think. Um, yeah, so let's put that back. Yep, so I hope you like the video. If you do, uh, please subscribe and like. Once I've got this working as I, as I want, and I know it's right, I'll put it in the pit bike. I had it in the pit bike before, but yeah, I had issues with it. So that's why I've put it onto this load bench, which has, you know, helped diagnose the issue. Um, whether or not it's going to fix it, but it's another another where path to go down um all right cool i will um yeah see you in the video cheers guys right okay um tried this n number of times now um running in brushless just uh b l d c mode it's just giving me issues so i think i'm gonna go for foc um, so it's a lot quieter uh, you don't get the same output so you get a little bit less output it's sort of got like a soft start as well so um, it sort of limits that acceleration punch you get um, with the brushless uh, BL, BLDC mode um, just your standard brushless mode um, yeah FOC seems to have a bit of a slower start um, but yeah it's much quieter to run the motors um, 
but yeah, so we give that give that a test now and just see. And yeah, I'm not too bad. The motor's a little bit hot. Um, let's just go, I suppose. Hanging around. Right, so on the screen I've got um the FETS temperature on the screen, so that's what the blue lines are. Um obviously that's what we're gonna be watching. Um so and the amps are at the bottom bottom right corner and also in the black box on the left they will show you the motor battery current due to cycle and all that there as well and also on the meter on the screen the blue one there will give you so let's go i'm going to put this up to 14 Actually, I might go to max and then increase this. Mm, yeah, okay. I'm going to go max. Should we get up to? See, so it's still only like 40 degrees or something, it's nothing. Um, but it's just killing, killing everything. That is burning hot. Oh, where's my temperature? Sag 37, 37 is this 3 volt sag and 200, 400 and something volts. So that was the highest I could go with the load. The motor is so hot. Alright, cool. Yeah, right, so that was the uh, test done. It wasn't, um, you know, I couldn't go as much as I wanted to. So I think the max was a road down somewhere. Um, so the max was 135 amps on the best tool. Um, so that's what it was saying on the phases. And I measured the phases with a meter and that was um, this being correct. So 135 amps. Um, the temp got up to 40 degrees in that period of time, um, which wasn't much at all really. Um, you could tell by the how slowly it was um, increasing. Um, that it wasn't really, you know, it could take take a bit more. Um, that it wasn't over going to overheat really quickly, so that's quite good. Like, because once you get up to speed, that's gonna you're not gonna pull that 135 anymore. Um, but yeah, 100, I wish I could pull some more, but 135 is the max, um, obviously, because the load motor is now gone. <laughs> that's lost the phase. I have taken it apart to find out what's wrong with it, but. Um, it's definitely um, definitely toasted somewhere. It's probably the solder joints, I think, actually, from their windings. <clears throat> they probably got hot enough to melt, I'd imagine. So um, probably acted like a little fuse, which is probably good. Um, and then the amp, the amp meter 
the blue one that does the battery amps that was running at 115 amps from the battery um, that's 4300 watts uh, and the battery sagged down to 37.8 uh, and then recovered back up to like 40 point uh, was it 40 point 40 or something so it wasn't that bad of a sag really um, none of the battery wires got hot none of the connections got hot going to the vest so before I was getting a lot of hot connections because uh, I was using XT60s now everything's XT90 and that yeah nothing I couldn't even feel any warmth from any of that side so that's good so it shows that the battery and everything else can sort of handle handle it um, so yeah so it's basically where I am so I think the next step if I want to carry on load testing it I probably won't use a motor I'll probably try and use like um well motor like a, a hydraulic gear motor um, I can probably get one uh, for free from somewhere uh, because that's quite good because the hydraulic you know hydraulic oil can get up to a good temperature um, all I need is a hydraulic gear motor and a flow restriction valve um, you know and that will be adequate to do whatever test you know I could do, run long tests and find out find out what you can do um, and also find out the limits of the an alternator being driven um, obviously if if you're running at 135 amps and the alternator continues to get hot then it's not that's not it's you know it's rating is under 135 amps so it'd be good to find the actual rating of the alternator um, that is continuous run loads without overheating um, would be quite good um, but yeah hope you like the video guys and um, I will yeah I don't know see what happens if I do another load test with it under some more load or I just put it straight into a bike who knows see what happens anyway cheers guys